when I turned 50, I'd already been through five age-defining illnesses. So I'd been through a rough trot, but I was getting better. And I realised that there are strategies you can take to make sure that you age well. My name is David, uh, I'm 68 years old. Uh, I've had HIV since uh, 1984, so 37 years. I've been involved with Living Positive Victoria since the very beginning in 1988. So my involvement has been for the long haul. I've been there since the beginning. Aging well with HIV for me is paying attention to areas that possibly your average 50 year old doesn't think enough about. We have to probably put a little bit more effort in because the chances we're going to get relative comorbidities as you get older are a little bit higher in us. Even though we've got good treatments, the inflammation that happens in HIV is still going on at a very low level, even in relatively well people. So this can lead to, you know, things like cardiac problems or kidney problems or particularly arthritis. You know, regardless of whether you're being treated well, these things happen with age anyway. But we've heard that with people with HIV, they tend to get these earlier. So we have to be on, on the ball about being preventative to make sure these things don't happen sooner rather than later. I think people should think about daily exercise, number one. It might be just walking, but there is some evidence that uh, a resistance exercise like you know, basically weights ha has a big effect because we can be a little bit more prone to losing muscle as we get older. I mean, everybody does, but we're a bit more prone to it. So resistance exercise is important. So that really means going to a gym or doing it in your home. You can purchase your own uh, weights easy enough. I personally find going to a gym with other people keeps me uh, uh, more on, on target because if I, I leave it to myself, I'm going to get a bit slack and think I won't do it today. But if I'm with other people and I've got a gym appointment to make, you know, say twice a week, I'll do it. And, I, you know, they're usually people I like hanging around with. I'm a little bit in the frail side because of all the things that have happened to me and I think I've got to keep, you know, the joints moving. I've got to limit the amount of damage that osteoarthritis can do to me. But I've also recently discovered an exercise called hydrotherapy and it's a burn, it's the best thing I've done. Looking for things like this that can give you a, a, an extra ability to strengthen your, your body, I think is very important. I really think it's number one. The mind is another thing. I think your brain and exercising your brain is important. We all know that some of those things happen later in life. It's part of the aging process. Hopefully they don't happen until very late. But just doing things like reading the paper every day, doing crosswords or whatever, that, that exercises your brain is really useful, I reckon. You know, the, probably the most important thing that I do is I mix with other uh, people, socialise and, and positive people. Uh, I've got uh, heaps of positive friends and I, do, I go to the Living Positive peer group uh, uh, meetings once a month and they're very valuable. You learn stuff, you develop friendships, I, I really recommend them. But I'd also say um, keep engaged with uh, you know a broad group of people. Uh, might be a hobby or an interest or something that you, you know you basically enjoy and I think Enjoyment's a very important part of everyone's life and it shouldn't all be about work and, uh, and no play. When I was 50, I'd already been through a pretty rough time, but the good thing was I was feeling 
as if the new treatments were giving me a lot of energy. Uh, so we're talking back in the early 2000s, if it's that long ago. And I would say the osteoarthritis I've experienced since, I could have, I'd like to think I could have done a bit better job at exercising early to prevent it, because it's been a, a crippling part of my, literally a crippling part of my existence in that I've had to have four joint replacement operations since, and that's been a bit of a trauma. It hasn't really made me stronger, and if I was a bit stronger then, you know, I like exercised every day, I might have done it every couple of days, but I think maybe I should have taken the exercise a little bit more seriously. Um, I've always been close to my doctors, but I would always believe you need to be as literate about your medical condition as you can be. And you shouldn't be scared of doctors. A person with HIV who's not prepared to develop good relationships with their doctors won't fare well. You need to have a close relationship with your doctor, but you do need to uh, be able to go to them for anything because you'll have all these fears that things are going wrong and there's nothing, or it might be going wrong and you need to take preventative steps, get in early and make sure it doesn't develop into, you know, a cardiac event or kidney events like I've had. I mean, all that stuff should be checked out when you've got concerns. <music>